The gut is by far the largest immune organ in the body, and it's well known that the microbiome, the constitution of microorganisms in the gastrointestinal tract, correlates with autoimmune disease. And so fecal transplant has been proposed as a treatment of multiple sclerosis. But what do the data say? Let's have some fun. As gross as it sounds, a fecal microbiota transplant has been used successfully to treat various diseases, in particular certain gastrointestinal infections such as by Clostridium difficile. However, it's also been studied in autoimmune diseases. And to answer the obvious question, no, you don't have to eat feces. You can either get it from an endoscope deposited in the stomach above or from a colonoscope enema below, or you can swallow freeze-dried capsules. And the donors are often relatives, and they do adequate screening to rule out contagion diseases. Various reports have shown a difference in the microbiome between people with MS and healthy controls. For instance, people with MS tend to have more pedobacteria, flavobacterium, and pseudomonas, but less Prevotella, Bacteroides, and Clostridium and Lactobacillus. Furthermore, research links the specific constitution of the microbiome in MS to prognosis. For example, acromancia, mucinophilia has been linked to lower disability and smaller brain lesions in MS, whereas clostridium is linked to worse disability. Also, some drugs that work in MS, like drugs that work on B cells, such as Ocrevus and Rituximab, may partly normalize the microbiome, and that may be part of their mechanism of action. Obviously, the relationship between gut bacteria and the immune system is very complex, but scientists have attempted to theorize reasons for the connection. For example, Prevotella, which is deficient in MS, can ferment dietary fibers to produce short-chain fatty acids, which may have a role in protecting the blood-brain barrier, the natural barrier between the brain and spinal cord and the rest of the body, from oxidative stress. Also, Bacteroides fragilis, also deficient in MS, can induce the anti-inflammatory inflammatory cytokine interleukin-10, which is part of the T-helper cell type 2 pathway, which is stimulated by interferon medications. Also, they induce regulatory CD25 positive T cells, which are aberrant in multiple sclerosis. And so the research for fecal transplant began in mice. And this is a study in experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, or EAE, a mouse model of multiple sclerosis. And you can see that the mice who received the fecal transplant on the bottom had far less disability than those who received the control treatment. This is the EAE score, a measure of disability in mice. And they also looked at the thoracic spinal cord under the microscope, and the mice that did not receive the fecal transplant had thickened in large inflamed myelin sheaths, which were much more normal in mice receiving the transplant. And the same is true for other autoimmune diseases. For example, some people with ulcerative colitis seem to respond to fecal transplant. This is one such example. You can see an intestinal biopsy day zero with extensive infiltration of the immune system, which is greatly reduced by day 84 after the transplant. Now let's move specifically to humans with MS. This is a proof of concept study in someone with MS getting two fecal transplants transplant showing a dramatic increase in brain-derived neurotrophic factor involved in neural repair and regeneration. This is a fascinating case report of a 61-year-old woman with secondary progressive MS who received a fecal transplant for another reason. She had C. diff, a bacterial infection. And you can see her disability dramatically worsened prior to the transplant, and she had an EDSS of 6, meaning she required a cane to walk 100 meters. Yet, even 10 plus years after after the transplant, she remained stable. In fact, by some metrics, she improved. Her time 25-foot walk improved over many years despite progressive MS. In fact, her cognitive function measured by symbol digit modality test increased over the years, and her hand function measured by the nine-hole peg test also got better. Though take this case with a grain of salt because she may have been temporarily worse during the infection. Another anecdote is a 30-year-old man with MS and trigeminal neuralgia with severe leg weakness who also required an indwelling urinary catheter. He went underwent five fecal transplants, again for an unrelated reason, constipation, and he improved not just in his constipation but also regained his ability to walk and no longer needed a urinary catheter and even 15 years later he was stable. Now you don't necessarily need to consume feces to improve your microbiome. This is a high-impact multi-dimensional study on 
14 people with MS involving the Mediterranean diet and exercise, and they were able to somewhat normalize the microbiome, making it closer to healthy controls. You can see the increase in coprococcus, for example. And they were able to show an increase in functional outcome. For example, the six-minute walk test, there was an increase in gait from 191 meters to 260 meters, but they also exercised as part of this program, so it's hard to say what did what. Now, I know what you're thinking overall. None of this data is very good, and I'm too classy to say it, so I give you my esteemed colleague, Dr. Vinay Prasad. This paper, it doesn't prove, pardon, pardon the pun, doesn't prove shit. And that's it, it really doesn't. But looky, looky what I found. A large randomized trial of fecal microbiota transplant in multiple sclerosis done at University of California, San Francisco with the principal investigator, Dr. Jeffrey Gelfan. And it should be completed, but I couldn't find any data. So I emailed the first author and he said he doesn't have data yet. It should be later this year. And once I get that, it will be the first comment below. But I hope you enjoyed the video. And I would like to know if you've tried fecal transplant or maybe had it for an unrelated reason and how did it affect your MS and do you have suggestions for future videos?